It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pierce coming to you from Baltimore. The Democratic National Convention starts on Monday, July 25th. And on the eve of the convention, on the 24th, there will be a rally for action on climate change, with thousands of people expected to attend. With us to discuss the event and the Democratic Party and Hillary Clinton's platform on the environment and climate change is the author of Fracopoly, The Battle for the Future of of energy and the environment, Winona Howder. Winona, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so glad to be here. So, Winona, you're also a uh, founder and the executive director of Food and Water Watch, and you are obviously going to be on the ground there organizing this event. Tell us what you expect to gain from it. Well, we are so thrilled that this event has been now endorsed by 900 groups from all 50 states. What we really hope to achieve is to, be, to continue building the political power of the movement to ban fracking and to stop all of the bad practices by the oil and gas industry. We are very happy to be in Philadelphia to declare our independence from fossil fuels and to show uh, the Democratic establishment this movement is not going away. It's going to expand and continue growing and electing people who are doing the right thing for our communities and for our global climate. We need to make a very swift transition to renewable energy and the use of energy efficiency technologies. Now, let's take a look at a clip uh, from Hillary Clinton uh, during the debate with Bernie Sanders on the issue of fracking. I don't support it when any locality or any state is against it, number one. I don't support it when the uh, release of methane or contamination of water is present. I don't support it, number three unless we can require that anybody who fracks has to tell us exactly what chemicals they are using. So by the time we get through all of my conditions, I do not think there will be many places in America where fracking will continue to take place. My answer is a lot shorter. No, I do not support fracking. Now, Winona, uh, Hillary Clinton was very carefully crafting her answer about this uh, issue of fracking. Um, but, you know, a lot of environmental organizations have endorsed Hillary, and they're saying that uh, she's running on the most environmentally friendly platform in history. Uh, she's committing to a half a billion uh, solar panels by the end of the first term and also to set a 10-year goal for generating enough renewable energy to uh, power every home in America, she says. And uh, this all sounds good, but what are your thoughts on all of this? Well, my thoughts are that Hillary Clinton, if elected, will only be as good as our organizing. That's how we've uh, achieved the victories that we have, um, banning fracking in New York, stopping fracking in Maryland, banning it in Vermont, more than 500 communities uh, passing some kind of measure against fracking, and this huge movement that's grown up. We're going to have our work cut out for us no matter who is in office, and it's really our job to keep the organizing up and to organize for the 2018 elections. This is a long-term battle that we're engaged in, and it's going to take holding our elected officials accountable, uh, congressional district by congressional district, state by state, and building the power so that ultimately we can actually elect a presidential candidate who does what most Americans want, and that is to transition into a clean energy future. And it's worth noting that one of the things that our movement has achieved is that now more Americans are against fracking than for it. And I think that that's a real tribute to the grassroots organizing that's been going on uh, around the country. And we just have to keep that up. 
Now, the RNC this week uh, is discussing uh, disbanding the EPA, pulling out from the Paris Agreement and killing Obama's clean power plant. There's a lot at stake. And uh, if Hillary Clinton wins, there's going to be enormous pressure in pushing her further on these issues, uh, uh, since we're not going to have Bernie Sanders, who just oppose fracking altogether. Um, what kind of challenges are ahead at the DNC? And then uh, tell us what kind of pressure you'll be bringing about if, uh, if Hillary Clinton is the president? Well, I think this March for a Clean Energy Future is symbolic of the pressure that's going to continue to build on elected officials. And we know that we are really in a battle for the future of our climate, and that natural gas is not the answer uh, because of methane and because it's such a potent greenhouse gas. So I think there's really no answer except to keep organizing and we have to do it community by community and will you and be I, uh well, no no will you be advocating for uh uh if hillary clinton is elected for example will you be advocating for her to rescind from some of the uh agreements that have been signed like the keystone xl pipeline and and so on well if if Hillary uh, Clinton is elected, we will be doing everything that we can to push her in the direction for a clean energy future. And that means uh, not signing on to trade agreements that trade away our ability to have the strongest environmental regulations as possible. We'll be organizing to ban fracking. We'll be organizing to try and make the Environmental Protection Agency actually do its job, which has not happened during the Obama administration. We'll continue to organize in states where we are trying to put pressure on governors to make decisions that really protect the communities where oil and gas drilling is going on. And, you know, this is a, this is a long uh, battle that we will take piece by piece, but it's too late for really tiny incremental changes. And what we've found in our organizing at Food and Water Watch and working with many, many grassroots groups around uh, the country is people are ready to fight for the kind of world they want. They don't want to um, have half-baked answers and these schemes like cap and trade, for instance. They really want to have uh, the ability to go out and organize. And I think we're really going to need to do something about policies around renewable energy. One of the reasons that I wrote Fracopoly is, uh, you know, just looking at the statistics for where renewable energy has gone. In 2015, only just over 5% of our national electricity, these are government statistics, little over 5% came from solar, wind, and geothermal. We are not moving quickly enough, and we need to stop saying that the market is going to do it, and we need to organize to put in place the policies that are going to require us to move into this renewable energy future and to stop fracking. And that's what we're doing in Philadelphia. That's the power that we're showing at the Democratic Convention. It's people power. It is to show the Democratic establishment that their base means business. We are going to make this transition. We're going to do everything we can to stop, to uh, prevent further climate chaos. I mean, it's a matter of life and death for future generations. Winona Howter, I thank you so much for joining us today. And I just also want to say that the Real News Network will be there at the uh, DNC next week and will definitely be following the demonstration on the eve on the 24th. And we'll be looking for you, Winona. So thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. I'll be looking for you, too. Thank you for joining us on The Real News Network. And stay tuned for The Real News uh, DNC coverage next week, starting Monday.